New leadership unveiled as China is stepping into a new era this morning. Xi Jinping was elected the president at the country's annual parliament meeting. Hello and welcome to Voice and Votes 2013, covering the latest from China's annual political meetings. I'm Andrew Xing here in Beijing. Also in this program, we are quite uh, happy to be one of the first. We talked to South African ambassador to China for his views on China's new leadership. Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, was elected President of the People's Republic of China and Chairman of the PRC Central Military Commission on Thursday morning. The plenary meeting of the first session of the 12th National People's Congress also elected Zhang Dejiang Chairman of the MPC Standing Committee. Liu Yanchao was elected Vice President of the People's Republic of China. Xi Jinping, the newly elected president of China, has a unique experience as an educated youth in rural China when he was a young man. She is believed to be deeply steeled by his early years. At the age of 16, he volunteered to live in a small village in northwest China's Shanxi province. She became a hardworking, capable young man in the villagers' eyes. By gaining their trust, he was elected village party chief. He was recommended for enrollment at Tsinghua University in 1975. In the 1980s, when many of his contemporaries were going into business or leaving to study abroad, she gave up a comfortable office job in Beijing and went to work as a deputy party chief of a small county in North China's Hebei province. Later became party chief of Ningde Prefecture in southeast China's Fujian province, one of the poorest regions at the time. She was then appointed party chief of Zhejiang province after he spent 17 years as local party chief in Fujian province. Xi Jinping's political career started at grassroots level and gradually built up with years of hard working. President Xi will be visiting South Africa for the first time as elected head of state to attend the fifth BRICS summit. Now let's talk to the South African ambassador to China for his views on China's new leadership. Stay with us. Well, first of all, I um, would like it again to take this opportunity to congratulate um, the uh, Chinese leadership, new Chinese leadership, for the um, appointment into uh, this uh, very responsible uh, position of leading the country uh, in the next phase of development of, uh, of China. And um, we um, are quite uh, certain that the, the leadership that has been appointed will uh, be equal to, to the task. And as South Africa, we are looking forward to working together and interacting with the new Chinese leadership. And uh, we are quite excited about the fact that uh, um, the newly appointed uh, uh, leader, Secretary General of the Chinese Communist Party, um, Mr. Xi Jinping, um, um, who has already been uh, to South Africa. Um, we are excited about the prospect of uh, uh, also hosting the incoming uh, president of the People's Republic of China after the, um, the NPC uh, uh, Congress. We're looking forward to hosting the incoming president of China and the new leadership uh, when they come to South Africa to participate in the, in the BRICS uh, uh, summit. And um, we are quite uh, happy to be one of the first few 
countries that the incoming president of the People's Republic of China will be visiting soon after uh, appointment. And uh, we're looking forward to working uh, together. And this bodes well for the relationship between uh, South Africa and China and between China and the African continent. Well, let's take a look at the poor result from yesterday's topic. Poor result is kindly provided by China Daily Mobile News. The last topic was Yuan Chunming, a member of the CPPCC National Committee, suggested that invoices for purchases of liquor and tobacco products should carry special marks, and those invoices should not be reimbursed by government agencies and institutions. Well, we altogether we have received 2,768 feedbacks from our audience. 60% of the votes support the proposal, 21% of them against it, and we have another 19% stay neutral. Here's a good response from uh, actually an audience in Guangzhou. He said, as a grassroots staff of the country's finance system, I think that special invoices for purchase of liquor and tobacco can help the supervision of the tax, finance and audit authorities. But completely wiping them out from the checks of government is not proper. Liquor and tobacco consumption is not a problem as long as they are consumed on reasonable occasions. All right, let's take a look at today's topic. CPPCC member Zhang Shuhua suggested that the country should attach more importance to both Chinese language and professional education while reducing the weight of English in exams and evaluation in one's career development. What do you think? China mobile users can text your response to 1065-8007835. Smartphone users can also comment on our respective iPhone and Android applications. Until then, bye-bye.